What is up Artemers? How is everybody doing? I hope everyone is so so well and had a super fabulous holiday season and of course Happy New Year! Because I always forget to introduce myself, hello my name is Alex. I have two bachelor's degrees, one in philosophy, one in public relations slash advertising infiltrating the system with the second one. With these two, my overall focus is in ethical communications as well as creative expression. And so, welcome to my channel. That's what we talk about here. And we also like to mix in movies and pop culture and all things fun to talk about. So, welcome, welcome. Bienvenue. <laughs> my personal philosophies have been greatly inspired by Friedrich Nietzsche and other existential philosophers, as well as concepts found within Buddhism and Taoism and ancient Egyptian virtue ethics, but other than the last one, that is basically what we're going to be talking about today, existentialism and Buddhist concepts. So let's get into it, shall we? None of us truly even exist. Today, I would like to talk to you about what is static and what can change, as understanding this can significantly affect how we see the world and therefore how much we suffer from it. Additionally, today, I would like to speak against one of my favorite authors, Chuck Palahniuk, from his 1996 work Fight Club, where he coined the term snowflake, which everyone at least used to love to use. You know, you're a snowflake, you're too sensitive, all that goodness, but to read it for you. The beautiful or unique snowflake. You are the same decaying organic matter as everything else. And we are all a part of the same compost pile. Well, I am here to tell you, you are a beautiful and unique snowflake. And that's perfectly okay. If not freaking awesome, you are a unique being who will ever be unique every day. <laughs> Sure, yes, we are all part of the same compost pile, but that doesn't take away from how unique we are in a true sense. Just because one thing does not equal the next thing, that is just bad utilitarianism right there. <laughs> um, sorry Tyler Durden. If you ask me, everything that Tyler Durden screams and philosophizes is something that I would not want humans to feel. Unfortunately, we are meant to look at advertisements and chase cars and get things that we don't need and we're tired of it. You know, you know the speech. This is something I do not want people to feel. This is something obviously no one wants to feel. This is why Project Mayhem drives people to burning down buildings. But we can only move one step at a time. To get back to our beautiful uniqueness, we are in actuality unique every day, in every moment, with every passing thought, with every reflection or just blink. We're different because of time and change and everything is and everyone is and even as we fall as a snowflake from the clouds to become a blur into a white dust cover of commonality and oneness and what seems like a never-ending non-uniqueness again this does not take away from how far we come from in our journey from the cloud to the bottom, the ground, wherever you fall. It doesn't take away our shape, we just happen to fall to the earth. And that's fine, no matter how you see the analogy, be it amongst other humans or death itself. 
getting back to the quote, we do decay and we do compose and we will someday be gone. But this in itself only adds to our uniqueness. This actually adds to our ability to be unique. I say never be complete. I say stop being perfect. I say let, let's evolve, let the chips fall where they may. Accepting this fact, we are able to create and develop ourselves over a set period of time and take a roller coaster ride from the clouds to the ground and form our crystals along the way. That's beautiful. That is, I think, how I would want to look at the analogy. Don't look at a white cover of nothingness because that really makes it hard to look at yourself as something that can change more, you know, and not melt into the abyss. The dudes are emerging. He's ready. Oh, I think I might be nobody. Wow. The insecurity level with you guys is ridiculous. So, what kind of snowflake are you? Are there any certain points of ease or struggle along your path? I don't know why I'm doing this. Is it these are the snowflakes. Do you attach any labels to yourself to better picture how you fit into the world? You know, a cartoon version of yourself. A bitmoji, I think is the word. But more or less, do you have a face that you work to protect? And something that's static and can't change. When it comes to existentialism, existential crises, the existential void, there is one important or significant Eastern philosophy that often comes to mind, and that is none of us truly even exist. Actors that are required to put on faces often and, you know, rigorously, uh, probably understand this better than anyone, but most publicly, Jim Carrey definitely understands this. You know, they, Jim Carrey was a less uh, intentional character right. because I thought I was just building something that people would like, but it was a character, you know, so it's, uh, you know, I played the guy that was free from concern so that people who watched me would be free from concern. You know, and uh, and then at a certain point you go like, okay, well, that's great, mm. but you know, it's like the one thing like people talk about depression all the time. The difference between depression and sadness, sadness is just, you know, from happenstance, whatever happened or didn't happen for you, or you know, grief or whatever it is, and depression is your body saying, fuck you, I don't want to be this character anymore. I don't want to hold up this this avatar that you've created in the world. It's too much for me, right. you know. And uh, you should think of the word of depressed as deep rest. Deep rest. Your body needs to be depressed. Mm. It needs deep rest from the character that you've been trying to play. You know, the the uh, great and powerful Oz. I I'm the great and powerful Oz. <laughs> How dare you come near me? You know, kind of thing. And you're just the sweaty guy behind the curtain going. Right. <laughs> It's an amazing metaphor, you know, uh, in that movie. There is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream. There's just things happening. Jim Carrey might be a little bit, but there is no me. There is just what's happening is such a beautiful foot in the door to what I want to talk about more or less today, which is that we don't exist because it will truly help you just stay in the moment and allow for everything that happens to just happen because there's just things happening and often you cannot really do anything about it unless you can, of course, but how often is that? <laughs> and more meta, um, take Kirk Lazarus and Tug Speakman for example, from Ben Stiller's amazing movie, Tropic Thunder, where you have Ben Stiller and Rob Down June as actors completely break down, being that their characters are also actors, and do not know 
who they are in the world. We need you, your men need you. Are you with us? I'm a rooster illusion. Fuck it, we'll oh, deal with shit. him later. Let's move. Come on. We are all rooster illusions. That's what I'd say. As some of you may remember from our video on suffering, there are three marks to existence according to traditional Buddhist teachings. If I don't pronounce these correctly, please forgive me. My Sanskrit is not great. Anyways, the three marks of existence from traditional Buddhist teachings are impermanence, anitya, suffering, dukkha, and the non-self, anatta or and that man. After going over the Four Nobles Truths and how this leads us to the Eightfold Path, I've been wanting to talk about the other two marks of existence because realistically this all goes back towards in a circle as the three marks of existence have to be understood correctly in order to first step foot into the Eightfold Path as the first step is the right understanding. To read the rest for us today, just for some context, Buddha's Eightfold Path is the right understanding, the right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So the right understanding, or sometimes called the right view, is the first step toward the Eightfold Path, which will lead us toward the cessation of suffering, aka no more suffering. <laughs> this can differ between different practices or different Buddhist schools to where it, there is an end and a nirvana within this plane or within the next plane, and it is a constant practice of Eightfold Path walking. So I would much prefer the latter of the two because if it's the former, I am failing. <laughs> Anywho, the right understanding is understanding the Four Nobles Truths as well as the Three Marks of Existence. And so the three marks of existence precede all of this as the four noble truths are a deeper explanation as to just one of the marks, suffering. Various schools of Buddhism do teach these marks of existence differently. There can be either three or four or however they, they want to write it. There's many schools of Buddhism, but above anything, I found a quote from BBC's GCSE, or General Certificate of Secondary Education program. The Buddha taught that people suffer because they cannot accept change. He believed that people can only come closer to enlightenment when they accept that they are changing beings. The happy place is realizing that you're everything, you know, and that there's no real you involved in the first place you know it's a it's a it's a weird little semantic jump that you make where it sounds like well that's totally fucking threatening man i can't i can't not be me i've built this construct and it's just ideas right. they're just ideas change is one word that can sum up all of the three marks of existence be it impermanence, suffering, or the non-self. As all of this has to do with change. Nothing is static but birth, death, and whatever comedic relief you want to add next. Other than that, everything decays and everything changes, ages, it is non-static, impermanent. And so with this, we do tend to suffer as we cannot accept change, as we can form expectations on the future to which change and we have to change our plans and all of that great goodness and this causes us to suffer greatly and within ourselves our non-being this is a, a blank canvas but i don't even want to add so much physicalness to it because it's 
It's nothingness. It's an empty, glorious imagination of future possibilities. And so, to exemplify this to maybe something you've seen before, Buddhist mandalas are created with dyed grains, to which are then meticulously created into beautiful formations of shapes and colors, and then they're destroyed, blown away, or shoved off, and destroyed forever. Because the rice, or sand, or whatever you use, is gone. And it's a beautiful symbol that something, and pretty much everything, will never be permanent. It is impermanent. But at the end, it will be destroyed and dismantled to symbolize the impermanence of all the phenomena. There is a beginning and an end. That nothing lasts forever. And yes. there's no attachment to the actual thing. It's kind of like when we moved from one home to the other, right? What happened? We had a wonderful time in the old place, and now we moved and we started a new place, right? This can often be really difficult to imagine, and I even got in a bit of a tiff with my sister trying to explain it, but more or less what's really important is that we are able to imagine ourselves as changeable. We are ever-changing, ever-growing, ever-developing, expanding, you know, creating and adding to the world human beings. And so, to imagine ourselves as a static 2D cartoon character who doesn't change over 10 seasons. I'm finding that ultimately the, the freedom from it is, uh, is something people are kind of hungry for in a way. Right. They're like, I don't want to be me either. Right. You know, and I, and I go, well, look great, because you never have been. The reasons why we have sayings like YOLO or FOMO is because we are decaying matter. So yes, Chuck Palahniuk, you are right in that, but we are still unique. Decaying does not mean ununique. What it truly means is that we are able to appreciate everything so much more. To get back to our awesome friends in Tropic Thunder, if you know someone who changes all the time, or doesn't, I think the most beautifully cheesy end of the movie is... You guys came back for me. Cool. Hey, I want you to know something. What? I know who you are. You're my friend. You're my brother. But like a really cool brother, you know? Like a brother where there was no animosity. Don't or... look now, you got some real tears going. And so even if you don't know who you are, you know, if your dudes are emerging, if you're a rooster illusion, that's okay. If there's anything that goes against this philosophy in our daily lives, it is labels. And I think post 2020, everyone is aware of this fact. But labels in a more real sense, like self-fulfilling prophecies, are labels that we create and follow, maybe by ourselves or by someone we know. But we tack on these characteristics of I'm good or I'm I'm bad or I do this or you know I have a mohawk like it makes it more difficult to change and be able to you know become a, a new human are you the same human from 10 years ago to today it's been a part of the evolution of uh, ego is is to uh, spend your uh, first half of your life acquiring and adding thinking you can add to yourself mm -hmm. and and it looks great. I mean, it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes, and mm -hmm. you know, and you're uh, and you've done something that people admire. But it can never fulfill you. You can never be happy. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not where happiness comes from. And you may be wondering, like, does one action define me, or does a like habitual lifestyle of good or bad actions define me? Within this Buddhist school or concept of anatman, not in self, impermanence, like, no, neither. There is really no you 
that can be defined as a point of reference for the future. And I know this can sometimes be difficult to understand too, like people always tell me. <laughs> um, but I, I, I understand. I do have habits and they do carry into the future. But more or less, if you work as a disciplined person, you can change that. And that's what I'm trying to do. I've got a whole sleep log, counter book, just change my sleep schedule and everything. I can change. I'm not a night owl. There is no one born to be a night owl or a dog person, a cat person. Whatever label someone tacks onto you, you know, like a, on a bulletin board. Realistically, we create bulletin boards by tacking on labels. And what this does, again, is make it even harder to change the future. Because you've got this whole bulletin board covered up and you can't see possibilities. Not you, but like, you know, I'm talking figuratively. <laughs> and so... The feeling of uh, wholeness is, is, a, is a different feeling than meanness. A snowflake is not born with its crystal arms and legs fully formed. It actually falls and forms them on its way from the clouds to the ground. And we are exactly the same. Sure, the past may be static or set in stone, but the future is full of ever-changing possibilities. And so, in closing, again, there are things that are static in the world, and there are things that are very changeable. This is also a stoic philosophy as well. I, re I realize this whole video could have been on stoicism. <laughs> but they don't do the whole you don't exist. And I think that really drops the mic if you ask me. I am not a night owl. I am an ever-changing being. <laughs> but then you just sound not the best argument maker, right? I bid you guys adieu to your beautiful future of possibilities and ever-changing wonder. Happy New Year's again. I hope this is inspiring to anyone who does like uh, New Year's resolutions. New Year, New You! Oh my gosh! Didn't even think of that. New Year, New You. Maybe that'll be the title of the video. If you haven't seen Hulu's Into the Darks movie, New Year, New You, Oh my gosh, super freaking good, very, very scary, highly suggest. I also watched Midsummer, and holy freaking cow, was it so crazy. We might have to talk about it sometime. With that, I will catch you guys on the flip flop. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this, and I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and... Happy New Year, happy holiday season, happy winter, or wherever you are on the earth. So, I'm just gonna keep gabbing because this tea definitely has caffeine in it. Alright. Alright.